lesson, we are going to learn about complex fractions. We're going to work in section 9.4 out of your textbook, which is on page 731. And we're going to work problem numbers 2 through 16 even. And we're going to work these problems out of order. Um, normally, I would just work problem numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. But I don't necessarily think that the way the book has laid out the problems that it matches the way I teach this like this section so we're gonna do it out of order um, so complex fractions complex fractions are when you have a fraction within another fraction so I'll say it one more time it's when you have a fraction within another fraction so if we look at problem number two in your book we have 5 over 6 divided by 2 over 3. Okay? So, again, complex fractions are when you have a fraction within another fraction. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up my problem. Okay? And I'm going to look and find out what my fractions are. What makes something a fraction is when you have a numerator and a denominator, so a number over a number. So there's my first number and there's my second number. So now you can see that there is a fraction. So I'm going to circle that. Okay, hold on one second. It seems that, okay, sorry, it looks like it was getting out of focus. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so now I can keep going and notice you have another fraction there. So this is just, try, just trying to find those fractions. So again, this is stated as 5 over 6 divided by 2 over 3. And another way of saying divided by is by using this little line with two dots there. So now, Instead of having my problem written vertically, I'm going to write it horizontally. So 5 over 6 was my first fraction. I'm going to use my new division symbol, and then I'm going to write my 2 over 3. So the rule for dividing fractions, which we learned in section 9.2, is keep, change, flip. So we keep the 5 over 6, change that division to multiplication, and then we flip that second fraction. So instead of having 2 over 3, we now have 3 over 2. So now we're multiplying, so we can go ahead and simplify. So that 3 and 6 will simplify to be a 1 and a 2. So we have 5 times 1 is 5 and then 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. So now, for the moment, we're going to skip problem numbers 4 and 6, and we're going to jump to problem number 8. Remember, I told you that we're going to go out of order, but we are going to revisit numbers 4 and 6. So on number 8, we have x squared over 12 divided by x to the fifth over 18. So if using that extra sheet of paper helped you, then feel free to use it to go until you find your first fraction. And you circle it. And then continue to go until you find your second fraction. And then you circle it. So now I'm going to write my problem horizontally. So I have x squared over 12 divided by x to the fifth over 18. Then keep, change, flip. So I keep my x squared over 12, change that division to multiplication and then I flip that second fraction. So my 12 and 18 simplify to be a 2 and a 3. So we have 3x squared over 2x to the fifth. 
but we can still simplify these x's. So that would give us 3 over 2x to the third because when you divide your x's you subtract your exponents and your x to the third goes on the bottom because the 5 was the larger of the two numbers. Now problem number 10, we have 15 over x squared divided by 20 over x cubed. So I'm going to go ahead and circle my top fraction and then my bottom fraction and then I'm going to write them horizontally. So I have 15 over x squared divided by 20 over x to the third. So we're going to keep, change, flip. So we get 15 over x squared times x to the third over 20. And the 15 and the 20 will simplify to be a 3 and a 4. So we have 3x to the third over 4x squared. Now we need to simplify our x's which give us 3x and if you write x to the 1 that's okay over 4. Now looking at problem number 12 we have x plus 3 over 4x over x minus 3 over 2x. So we circle our top fraction, circle our bottom fraction, and then we write it horizontally. So x plus 3 over 4x divided by x minus 3 over 2x and then you keep change flip. So x plus 3 over 4x times 2x over x minus 3. Well x plus 3 and x minus 3. You can't cancel them out and say negative 1. That doesn't work, okay? Um, they are not the same so they do not cancel. However, this 4 and 2 simplifies to be a 2 and a 1. And then you can also notice that these x's here will simplify. So that x will cancel with that x. So you're left with an x plus 3 in your numerator and then 2 times x minus 3 in your denominator. So that's it for problem number 12. Okay, looking at problem number 14, we have m minus 3n over 4m divided by m squared minus 3mn over 8n. So I'm going to circle my top fraction and then circle my bottom fraction and I'm going to write it horizontally. m minus 3n over 4m divided by m squared minus 3mn over 8n. Now I keep change flip. So m minus 3n over 4m times, oops, eight n over m squared minus 3m n. So now we notice we can factor something. Well, our m minus 3n doesn't factor. The 4m won't factor 
and the an won't factor. However, this denominator here has a common number of m, or a common variable of m, and when you pull that out, you're left with m minus 3n. So your m minus 3n's will cancel, and that 4 and 8 will simplify to be a 1 and a 2. So you're left with 2n over m times m is m squared. Okay? Now let's move on and look at number 16. On number 16 we have x plus 5 over x squared minus 6x over x squared minus 25 over x squared minus 36. Even though you start to see more and more terms come about, it's still just simple. Circle your top fraction and circle your bottom fraction. So now we're going to write it horizontally Now I'm going to keep, change, and flip. So I'm going to keep my x plus 5 over x squared minus 6x the same. I'm going to change the division to multiplication, and I'm going to flip that second fraction. Okay, now before I move on, I notice I can factor. Well, my x plus 5 doesn't factor, but here I can pull out an x, which leaves you with x minus 6. Here, that's my difference of perfect squares, so we know it as the Karkar method, so that's x plus 6, x minus 6. And then this is also your car car method. X plus 5, X minus 5. So your X plus 5's cancel here. Your X minus 6's cancel here. So you're left with X plus 6 over, be careful not to forget this little guy, X times x minus 5. Okay? So now we've got three problems that we s skipped, okay? And actually I lied, I'm so sorry. In the very beginning I told you we were going to go through 16. I'm sorry, I was wrong. I meant through 18. So there are three problems that we've skipped, so we're going to go back and do those. We'll start off looking at problem number four. On number four, we have three over four plus one over two over seven over eight minus one over four. So notice that's our numerator and this is our denominator. So every other problem we've done, everything has been over the same denominator. But notice here, there are two different denominators. Before you can do anything, you have got to combine your numerator and denominator first. So you've got to combine this, these two fractions here, and you also have to combine these two fractions here. Okay? So, my common denominator between these two fractions is a 4. Remember, in order to combine fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So we get 3 over 4 plus 2 over 4, which equals 
3 plus 2 is 5, and you keep your denominator of 4. Then your common denominator is 8, so to get an 8 on that 4, you multiply by 2. So you have 7 over 8 minus 2 over 8. 7 minus 2 is 5, and then your denominator is an 8. Okay, so now you circle your top fraction, circle your bottom fraction. So we have 5 over 4 divided by 5 over 8. Then keep change flip, 5 over 4 times 8 over 5. Notice how your 5's will cancel to be 1's. And then your 8 and 4 will simplify to be a 2 and a 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. And we know 2 over 1 is simply 2. Do not leave your answer as 2 over 1. You will not receive full credit. By this point you should realize that something over 1 is a whole number, it should just be that number, which is 2. Now let's look at number 6. On number 6 we have 1 plus 3 over 4 over 2 plus 1 over 8. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a minus. Okay, so now we need to combine these two fractions here, which is our numerator, and we need to combine these two fractions here, which is our denominator. Well, let's put these whole numbers over one first. So between these two denominators, our common denominator is four. So one times four is four, and then we didn't have to change this second fraction because it already had a denominator of 4. So 4 plus 3 is 7 over 4. Okay? So then our common denominator here is an 8. So that gives us 16 over 8 minus 1 over 8, which is 15 over 8. Circle your top fraction, circle your bottom fraction. So that's 7 over 4 divided by 15 over 8. So keep change flip. 7 over 4 times 8 over 15. 4 and 8 simplify to be a 1 and a 2. So 7 times 2 is 14. 1 times 15 is 15. So now to do the final problem in this lesson, which is problem number 18. On number 18, we have 3 plus 1 over b divided by 3 minus 1 over b. So make your whole numbers a fraction by putting them over 1. So your common denominator here is a b, which gives you 3b over b plus 1 over b. And since we can't combine those two numbers, we can still write them side by side over that common denominator of b. Now, do your denominator. Common denominator is still b. So that gives you 3b over b minus 1 over b. And then you write them side by side over that denominator. Okay. Now you circle your top fraction, circle your bottom fraction. 
That gives you 3b plus 1 over b divided by 3b minus 1 over b. Now we keep change flip. 3b plus 1 over b, change your division to multiplication, and you flip that second fraction. And be careful not to rewrite these incorrectly. It's very easy to do, so make sure you're careful of that. You can't cancel these 3b plus 1 and 3b minus 1 because they're not the exact same. They have different signs connecting them. Your b's cancel out to give you a 3b plus 1 over a 3b minus 1. So that's it. I hope that this lesson has been helpful for you and I wish you the best of luck.